Hi everyone. We're going to do a quick overview and introduction to the JDXI Manager, which is a really cool bit of software at the moment that you can get for free. This is the website address that you can download it from jdxi-manager.linuxtech.net and just click on download. We're going to look at the Windows version, which is currently 0.0.21 Alpha. When you download it, it's actually a standalone application. So you can just pop it on your web on your desktop and you can launch it. You can actually run it off a USB so you don't you have to you don't have to do any installation. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our, our MIDI input and output connections. Now I'm running my JDXI through a MX1 mixer, and the good thing about the MX1 mixer is you can map it to USB ports. So my JDXI is currently going through USB 1. So once we've got it all set up, let's test it. Beautiful, it works. Once you've actually got your MIDI set up, you're going to then save the settings. And each time you open and close the JDXI manager, it will remember those settings. Important to do that. Okay, let's have a look now. Down here are your you, these are going to be your four main screens that you're going to launch off from from the editor itself. These are your part editors. As you know, the JDXI is a four-part synth. So let's start off with the analog synth because I think it's the probably the most simplest. And we'll select analog synth on here, and we've got an initialized tone. So with the analog part, it lets you select your three different waveforms: your sawtooth, your triangle, and your square wave. And you'll notice if you look over on the synth, as I change these waves, it actually does change the light, which is pretty cool. If you enable the sub oscillator, it will turn that on and off as well. You can see the light turning on and off. So the software is interacting directly with the synth, which is really cool. All right, so. Let's do a little bit of sound crafting just to give you an idea. Let's do a sub oscillator. Right, let's do some filter. Let's give it some depth with the LFA. some resonance. As, and as you can see, I'm not actually touching the synth other than playing the keys. And all these are just coming straight from the editor. Now remember, this editor itself just stores it in the buffer, what we call the JDXI edit buffer. You can actually um, read from that buffer. So for example, if there is a tone that you do like, so say you like this toxic bass tone, you can actually pull that in and it will bring in all those parameters. Let's try another tone. Let's try sub bass. And you should hear there's a bit of a tremolo on that. So let's see if our LFO's on this one. It's got a 13 pitch depth. What about backwards? There you go, triangle sound. Fat as that. So you could use those stored patches in the analog synth section to get you going further to edit these. Because the synth itself doesn't have a huge amount of knobs to control enough for your performances, but that rule in depth editing. The biggest area I believe the synth lacks in is the envelope. Just one knob to adjust the envelope, to me is, it's, you know, they've got plenty of space here. They could have easily put sliders or something. So it's really good to have these ADSR knobs here to, to um, play with our filter and our amplifier 
envelopes. Moving right along, let's show you how we can save and load a patch. So, that, so I just showed you how you can actually load a patch from the synth. Now let's load a patch from one that I've saved earlier off the hard drive on my computer. So let's do this analog one here. Here we go, it's loaded now. Alright, and let's change the synth tone. And let's load my patch in again. Wait for it to kick in. So you can see it changes the actual synth tone in the in the edit buffer. Let's try a different one that I did. Wait for it to load. So there you go, loading and saving um, patches in the editor itself is really easy. Um, transferring patches to and from the synth is also really easy. One thing to remember though is the JDXI has no way of saving tones separately. You can save programs, so E64, which will save a whole, all the four parts, um, but the actual tones on each of the parts separately is is a little bit more difficult so this gives you a way of working with tones separately quite quite easily okay let's have a look at the digital part digital parts got a lot more parameters in it um, remembering the digital part itself turn the effects off just the init tone the digital part itself has three partials one thing to remember about editing the Supernatural um, tones on a roll on Supernatural synth like the JDXI is when you're editing these partials, they can be completely different. So you can have um, a whole bunch of digital oscillators ranging from sawtooth, square, pulse width, triangle, sine, noise, super saw, and then you can choose from PCM waveforms. So let's just have a quick look. I mean, this is not really an overview of the JDXI. That can be done later. But just quickly show you how this editor gets access to those waveforms straight away. So let's do the sawtooth. Now the square. Now the pulse width. Triangle. Sine. Noise. Super saw. And then let's choose a PCM. Then when you choose the PCM, it's choosing the default one here, which is sync sweep. But let's do, you've got all of these PCMs to choose from. There's hundreds of them, like, wow, like, so this is samples, right, basically. <laughs> anyway, so 160 samples to choose from plus those natural waveforms will give you some fun combining partials so you, you've got three of these per tone so you could combine weight natural waveforms with part, with uh, pcm waves with noise you, you know you could create some crazy stuff on here this gives you more access instead of having to menu dive through that synth to give you that sort of access to the sounds. Okay, so with each uh, oscillator waveform, there's also a wave variation control, and then you can also adjust pulse width and things like that. Remembering what I said before, when you're editing the partials, each partial has its own separate window, so you can edit them all individually. So let's just quickly get up a sawtooth there, a triangle there, and turn that on. And let's um, let's make the triangle go down an octave. Here we go. So we've got a, almost like a sub oscillator happening. 
And then the third one, uh, sorry, here, yeah. let's, let's make that a super saw and turn that on. So let's put that up a bit out of D tune. Let's go to. Don't forget to name your tone. This is crazy tone. Um, and you can save it. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop here. All right. That's probably, I mean, look, I'm not going to go through all these settings. You guys can do that. Read the manual, all that sort of stuff. Let's have a look now at the drum part. This is huge, this part. So all your drum settings, let's go drums, turn the effects off. At the moment we've got a TR909 kit on here. Okay, so each drum part is up the top as a tab. It's massive. This is a really cool thing. Um, now this tool is here, I can actually really edit these tones in these drums quite um, quite a lot. So, you know, you can tune it. So good. So cool. I mean, just the drum editing now on this actually makes this drum synth actually really cool. Um, geez, Roland, if you make a drum synth with this stuff on it as knobs and sliders, oh my god, people would just go bait, uh, ape shit over it. Seriously. Okay, so guys, have a play. This is free. You know, it doesn't require you to install anything on your computer. It's it's what we would call a non-destructive piece of software. You can run it off a USB. Look at these, look at the work that's gone into this. Hats off to the the author of this software. He's done a really good job. Anyway, guys, JDXI Manager um, from JDXI-Manager.LinuxTech.net. Um, I'll probably do some more in the future about this.